بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئرس وی ول بی ڈسکسنگ دا لیسن پلاننگ پروسیس ہاؤ ٹو پریپیئر اے لیسن پلان فار لینگویج ٹیچنگ اور فار ٹیچنگ اینی ادر سبجیکٹ ناؤ واٹ از اے لیسن پلان اے لیسن پلان از دا انسٹرکٹر روڈ میپ آف واٹ اسٹوڈینٹس نیڈ ٹو لرن اینڈ ہاؤ اٹ ول بی ڈن افیکٹیولی ڈیورنگ دا کلاس ٹائم دین You can design appropriate learning activities and develop strategies to obtain feedback on student learning. Having a carefully constructed lesson plan for each 3 hours lesson or 2 hours lesson or 1 hour lesson allows you to enter the classroom with more confidence and maximizes your chance of having a meaningful learning experience with your students so it is very very beneficial and significant for any teacher to prepare a lesson plan for teaching different subjects a successful lesson plan addresses and integrates three key components learning objectives learning activities assessment to check for students understanding now what a lesson plan provides a lesson plan provides you with a general outline of your teaching goals learning objectives and means to accomplish them and is by no means exhaustive a productive lesson is not one in which everything goes exactly as planned but one in which both students and instructors learn from each other now look at these details before the class what do you do identify the learning objectives plan the specific learning activities assessments and the sequence of lesson create a realistic timeline plan for a lesson closure so you must know what are your objectives you must know how you will carry out various activities and assessment techniques You must know the time allocation for different activities and you must know how to close a lesson. Now what should you do during the class? Share the lesson plan with your students helps keep them more engaged and on track. Now share your lesson plan. Tell them what will we do during which time so they could know what is to come next. and this way they will be engaged in the class after the class reflect on what have you done what activities you have carried out very well why and what you could have done differently these are three different steps that you must think about while preparing a lesson plan now these are six steps for preparing an effective or a good lesson plan the first one is identify the learning objectives before you plan your lesson you will first need to identify the learning objectives for the lesson a learning objective describes what the learners will know or be able to do after the learning experience rather than what the learner will be exposed to during the instruction typically it is written in a language that is easily understood by students and clearly related to the program learning outcomes The table below contains the characteristics of clear learning objectives. Now look at this table. Look at these are the characteristics and these are the descriptions of clearly stated task. These are the tasks which are free from jargons and complex vocabulary. Describe specific and achievable tasks such as describe, analyze and evaluate. Not vague tasks like appreciate understand or explore important learning goals now what are important learning goals describe the essential rather than trivial learning in the course which a student must achieve achievable the objectives must be achievable can be achieved within the given period and sufficient resources Now the objectives must be demonstrable and measurable can be demonstrated in a tangible way or accessible achievement and the quality of achievement can be observed 
The objectives must be, must be fair and equitable. All students, including those with disabilities and constraints, have a fair chance of achieving these objectives. Link to the course and program objectives. Consider the broader goals. For example, what are the objectives of your course or your program or your institutional goals? Link your specific these learning objectives of your class with these program goals. This is again very important. Now the second step of lesson planning is plan the specific learning activities. When planning learning activities, you should consider the type of activities students will need to engage. In order to develop the skills and knowledge required to demonstrate effective learning in the course, learning activities should be directly related to the learning objectives of the course and provide experiences that will enable students to engage in practice and gain feedback on specific progress towards these objectives. As you plan your learning activities, estimate how much time will you spend on each activity. Build in time for extended explanation or discussion, but also be prepared to move on quickly to different applications or problems and to identify strategies that check for understanding. Some questions to think about as you design the learning activities you will use are What will I do to explain the topic? What will I do to illustrate the topic in different way? How can I engage students in a topic? What are some relevant real-life examples, analogies, situations that can help students understand the topic? What will students need to do to help them understand the topic better? These are some questions you must think about. Many activities can be used to engage learners. The activities type, what the student is doing, and their examples provided below are by no means an exhaustive list, but will help you in thinking through how best to design and deliver high-impact learning experiences for your students in a typical lesson. Look at these different types of activities, these learning activities by different names and these descriptions. Now, what is the type of activity? Drill and practice is a type of activity in which there is an interaction with students, with teachers, with the content. Students are more likely to retain information presented in these ways if they are asked to interact with the material in some way. So the first activity you can do is drill and practice. Problem or task is presented to students where they are asked to provide the answer, maybe timed or untimed. Convey concepts verbally, often with visual aids, presentation slides or anything you use. You can also have a quiz activity exercise to assist the level of student understanding and questions can take many forms. Multiple choice questions, short answers, short questions, essay type questions, any questions that could engage them in the classroom. Now, student presentation games are simulation. These are other activities. It is interaction with digital content or students experiment with decision making and visualize the effects or consequences in virtual environment. Now what can they do? There may be oral report where students share their research on a topic and take on a position or a role. These must be goal-oriented exercises that encourage collaboration, competition with a controlled virtual environment, a replica representation of a real world phenomena that enables relationship context and concepts to be studied. Now, there are some other activities that focuses on interaction with others, like peer relationships, informal support structure, and teacher-student interactions, relationship, etc. There could be debates, verbal activity in which two or more different viewpoints and a subject are presented and a given. There could be discussions, formal or informal conversation on a given topic, 
questions where the instructor facilitates students sharing of responses to the questions and building upon those responses. There should be a feedback information provided by the instructor or peers regarding aspects of one's performance or understanding, guest feelings, thoughts, ideas, and experiences specific to given uh, topic by invited presenter. So possibilities are so many. It is important that each learning activity in the lesson must be aligned to the lesson's learning objective one. Meaningfully engage students in active, constructive, authentic, and collaborative ways. This is the second. Useful where the students is able to take what they have learned from engaging with the activity and use it in another context or for another purpose. The third step of lesson planning preparation is plan to assess students' understanding. Assessment is very necessary. Tests, papers, problem sets, performances, provide opportunities for students to demonstrate and practice the knowledge and skills articulated in the learning objectives and for instructions to offer targeted feedback that can guide further learning. So you must assess your students during, after, and it can be before the lesson. Planning for assessment allows you to find out whether you, your students are learning or not. It involves making decisions about the number and types of assessment tasks that will best enable students to demonstrate learning objectives for the lesson. Examples of different assessments. There could be formative or summative assessment, the criteria and standard that will be used to make assessment judgment. There must be criteria. There must be rubric students' roles in the assessment process. There must be self-assessment by students. There must be peer assessment in the classroom. Information should be given to the students how various tasks are to be weighed and combined into an overall grade must be provided to the students. The provision of feedback. Giving feedback to students on how to improve their learning as well as giving feedback to instructors how to refine their teaching. The fourth step is plan to sequence the lesson in an engaging and meaningful manner. Robert Gann proposed a nine-step process called the events of instruction, which is useful for planning the sequence of your lesson. Nine events of instructions. Inform learner of objectives. The first thing. Prior learning, what do they know already? Now you present your content, then you provide your guidance, then there is a practice of this content, then you, there is a feedback provided, then assessment and performance are there and then enhance the retention and transfer to the job. So these are nine different events that could give you sequence to your lesson. The fifth step, create a realistic timeline. A list of 10 learning objectives is not realistic. You can't achieve them. So narrow down your list to the two or three key concepts, ideas or skills you want to learn in the lesson. Your list of prioritized learning objectives will help you make decisions on the spot and adjust your lesson plan as needed. Here are some strategies. Estimate how much time each of the activities will take, then plan some extra time for each. When you prepare your lesson plan next to each activity, Indicate how much time you expect it will take. Plan a few minutes at the end of a class to answer any remaining question and to sum up the key points. Plan an extra activity or discussion. Be flexible. Be ready to adjust your lesson plan to students' needs and focus on what seems to be more productive rather than sticking to your original plan. Now, plan for lesson closure, the sixth one. Lesson closure provides an opportunity to solidify students' learning. Lesson closure is useful for both instructor and student. You can use closure to check for students' understanding and inform subsequent instruction. Adjust your teaching accordingly. Emphasize key information. 
tie up loose ends, correct students' mis misunderstanding. You can close your lesson according to any of these ways. Your students will find your closure helpful for summarizing, re reviewing, and demonstrating their understanding of major points. Consolidating and internalizing key information, linking lesson ideas to conceptual framework and previously learned knowledge, transfer ideas to new situations. There are several ways in which you can put a closure to your lesson. Whichever way you think the best works for you, follow that. After the closure of the lesson, these two points are very significant. During the class presenting your lesson plan, Letting your students know what they will be learning and doing in class will help keep them more engaged and on track. Providing a meaningful organization of the class time can help students not only remember better, but also follow your presentation and understand the rationale behind planning learning activities. You can share your lesson plan by writing a brief agenda on the whiteboard or telling students explicitly what they will be learning and doing in the class after the class reflecting on what you have done take a few minutes after each class to reflect on what worked well and why and what you could have done differently identifying successful and less successful organization of class time and activities would make it easier to adjust to the contingencies of the classroom if needed, revise the lesson plan. This is what a lesson plan is, how to prepare a lesson plan. Thank you so much for watching.